Hello everybody and welcome to Toy Toy to You Curator's Corner episode number 48. My name is Sean Brosnan, I'm a curator at Toy Toy Otago Settlers Museum here in Dunedin. I've been making these videos talking about the early history of our city. In the last episode we took a close look at a great photograph from early 1862 that shows the congested area around uh, Rattray Street and High Street, that sort of little central city block. Now there was a lot more in that photograph than I could talk about in the last episode. I want to go back to it today and have a look at a few more details that we can see in that shot. First, let's have another look at the arcade shopping mall under construction. Now in February 1862, a notice appeared in the Otago Daily Times advertising these new shops for rental, and it contained this plan of the arcade. Now you can see from it that after the first nine shop fronts, there was a larger building space designed to be a hotel. But well, if you look at the photograph, you can again see nine shop fronts and then an open space, presumably for the yet to be built hotel. Note too, that just a few shops further on, there were water closets, that is to say toilets. So it's good to know our pioneer shoppers had somewhere to relieve themselves. Now my DCC colleague, Alison Breeze has written a thesis on Dunedin's public toilet history. And she reckons that all the early ones were exclusively for men. I guess that must have applied to these arcade water closets too. That seems a bit surprising given how many women would have been shoppers with sanitary needs, but I suppose there's also nothing on this plan to say that the water closets were for public use either. If we look up just above the arcade, however, we can see what I think is probably a privy just behind the building with the ladder up against its back wall. Now this is the standard private toilet setup of those times, a little house over a long drop pit. There might be a second one in that open yard just beneath the arcade as well. And I wonder if those might be toilets in the odd piece of building shutting out from the back of the commercial hotel between its two chimneys. If so, they must have been enclosed closets that the waste had to be removed from. There were no pipes or sewers to deal with that at this point in time. There's another really high ladder leaning up against the side of the commercial hotel as well, a reminder of just how much building and extending was going on in central Dunedin at this point amidst the gold rush driven boom. One new element that can be evidenced by this photograph is the growing commercial link between Dunedin and Melbourne. There had been connections between the two settlements right from the early 1850s of course, especially once gold was discovered in Victoria. But until Otago experienced its own gold rush, there probably wasn't an awful lot of interest in the little Dunedin settlement by Melbourneian businessmen. That was definitely changing by 1862, however, and we can spot a signboard on a shop at the bottom of High Street with the name Feldheim Brothers on it. As the name might suggest, these were Jewish merchants who had recently come over from Melbourne, where their main base was, to establish a Dunedin branch to their business as importers. Their first advertisement at this address appears in November 1861. Their names are subsequently listed on the Dunedin Electoral Roll in 1863 as Hyman and Isaac Feldheim. They were originally from Poland, but that country didn't actually exist at this time, so their birth was officially registered as being from Prussia, or what we'd call Germany now. They were jewellers by trade, but in Dunedin they bought and sold a bit of everything, as you can see from later advertisements when they moved to Rattray Street. The Feldheims seem to have moved on from Dunedin in the 1870s, but their Sydney and Melbourne enterprises flourished. And when the younger brother, Isaac, died in London in 1903, he was classed as a gentleman and left behind a £75,000 estate split between England, Australia and New Zealand. So it's interesting to think that part of that successful arc of colonial business activity included time in this pretty humble looking Dunedin shop in 1862. The final detail I want to note in this image is likewise a business sign, and again, one that captures the mid-career activity of an Otago pioneer from humble origins who was to make a great commercial success of his life in Otago. We can catch just a small part of his business signage on the left edge of the photo, Wilson and Wayne Commercial Horse Bazaar. That's Job Wayne, who's remembered today more for the magnificent hotel in Princess Street that he built in 1878. But he was born in the East End of London in 1836, his father a tailor. Now that part of London grew faster than any other in the first half of the 19th century, and its population doubled between 1830 and 1860. 
it was seriously overcrowded with endemic crime, prostitution and poverty, all the things that the novelist Charles Dickens drew on for his evocative descriptions of what we now call Dickensian London. Job escaped all that when he was just 14 and working as a shop boy for James McAndrew in his London store. When McAndrew set sail for Otago in 1851, Job came out with him and then began his life in the colony working for his old boss on Carisbrook, his farm in Mornington Glen. A year later, still just 15, Job headed to Victoria to try his luck on the goldfields. Back in Dunedin a few years later, he was joined by his parents and siblings, and he then went into business running the livery stables for the commercial hotel in High Street. In 1859, he went into partnership with James Wilson to take the stables over, rebranding them as Wilson and Wayne's Commercial Horse Bazaar, as per the sign that we can just catch a part of here in Rattray Street. Like the Feldheims, Joe Wayne went on to build a life of considerable wealth and prosperity here in Dunedin. But that's another story. What I really want to notice here is the juxtaposition of their two businesses within a block of each other in central Dunedin in 1862 and that arc of a rising degree of prosperity for men, Job, Haman, Isaac, who all began in very humble circumstances with limited opportunities at home and who came out here to the colonies to build a new life and succeeded in that. Because it's that dream of building a new life and a better one that really colonisation was all about.